What's up and welcome back to another Workflow Wednesday. So glad you can make it and be here with us. Now this week I'm talking about exporting frames, which we covered last week, but I covered it for DaVinci Resolve. This week we're covering exporting frames in Premiere Pro. So it's gonna be a quick video. Premiere Pro sorta of has the same options as Resolve, but it's a little bit different. I'm gonna show you two ways. One way is the way that I think I've seen almost everybody cover. And the second way is gonna be a little bit more advanced and in depth, not really that hard, but still. It'll give you more control over the final image that you get. And I haven't seen many people cover it doing it this way. It'll be great if you need high resolution stills to export so that you can use for other things like using it in Photoshop or sending off frames for approval like we talked about in Resolve as well. Now, this this week's video is all thanks to this comment here. So if you guys have any ideas for videos that you wanna see or anything that, any topics that you guys wanna see me cover, go ahead and comment those down below because I do turn them into videos. Now, right before we get started, I just wanna say thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. If you're not already, please consider hitting the subscribe button as it helps me out immensely. And that way I can get content to you guys out faster and better content. So hit that subscribe button. Make sure to leave a like on this video, you know, hit the bell, share, like all the YouTube-y things people do. And with that, let's jump into the video. So here we are in Premiere Pro. Now I'm gonna show you guys the easy way first and then I'll show you guys the kind of longer, more complicated way. But like I said, it gives you more options and you're more in control of the settings that you can choose. So the first way is I have my program monitor here. This is where you see like your final output of the video. I'm just gonna pick a place on the timeline. So I wanna export this frame. The first and easiest way is to go to your program monitor here to these buttons. I already have it. It's called export frame right here. If you don't have this though, you can click the plus sign right here, which is your button editor. And that'll open up a little dialogue where you can choose what to put on your toolbar. Um, find this little camera icon, which is if you hover over it, it'll say export frame. And then you can just click and drag it down here. I'm not gonna do it because I already have it, but if you did, you, you can just add wherever you want. So once you have that down there, you can click okay. And then it'll, it'll be there. Mine for some reason is glitching out now, but let's do, let's put it down here. All right, so there we go. Now it's on my buttons down here. So if I click this, a little dialogue comes up to export frame. You can name it and then you can choose the format that you want. So you can do the drop down menu and you have all of these options. Usually I, I prefer to export in PNG if I'm going to or TIFF just because it's a little bit better quality. So I'm gonna leave it on PNG though. You can then browse to save it someplace so it shows you where it's gonna save it. You can also choose to import it back into your project. So if you, for some reason, wanna use it again in your timeline, then you can just import it back in. It'll add it to your uh, media bin. But I'm not gonna, usually I don't check this because usually I don't want it back in. I'm probably using it for a thumbnail or something. So once you hit okay, it'll save, you can go find it. Now this way you don't really have any options as far as compression goes or what resolution you want the image to be saved in. What you can do instead, which is option number two, is export a frame three export menu. So what you can do is we're back on our frame here. You can go to file export media or hit control m for your shortcut the dialog box for exporting settings will come up now what you're going to want to do is choose your format up here if you don't have all of these options you can just click the little arrow down next to export settings choose your format in this case i'm going to leave it in png you come down here make sure video is checked and then you get to mess with your settings so if you uncheck this which just match this matches your resolution to your timeline resolution you can actually uncheck this then you can mess around with the resolution. You can even unlink these if you want to make it a custom resolution. Uh, that's not like 16 by nine, let's say. I'm just gonna leave it on though because uh, UHD 4K is fine, good, good enough for me. And then you have uh, the options here to render at maximum depth and include the alpha channel. Uh, these ones you can kind of just leave as is. The one option though that you do need to uncheck is this export as sequence. If you leave this checked, it will, go through and export your entire video frame by frame. You don't want that, you just wanna save the one. So just uncheck this option uh, and then there you go, that's it. So now when you hit Q or export, it'll queue your one frame and then export it with whatever settings you had chosen. One other thing too, by the way, is if you come up here, PNG doesn't have the option, but if you choose JPEG, for example, you'll get this quality slider as well which basically just affects like how much compression and quality the JPEG you know exports with. So 
you can save this at 100 quality, which is the best version of JPEG. If you're familiar with Photoshop or whatever, you get the same kind of options. And then same thing, you know, just make sure export a sequence is unchecked. Uh, and then you can go ahead and render out. You can also choose your export color space. So you can put, you know, Rec 709 uh, or sRGB for like internet videos and stuff and then hit export. And then it'll export this, just this frame out for you. All right, and that's it. So that's all there is for this video. Like I said, it was pretty short and quick and painless. As you can see, there's different ways to do it in Premiere as well. Although, like I said, typically I've only seen people cover the first way of exporting frames. But now you guys have two options to use. So just in case you need high resolution, you can use the second option and export your stills. If not, you just need something quick that you can send off or use for your own reference, then you can use method number one and no one's the wiser. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, drop a comment down below, leave a like on this video, share it with somebody. And until next time, go out there and create something. A lot of it.